Jaron, let's just say we accept the reality of consciousness, which is an arguable point, but let's say we accept it. I think then we have two questions. Is it derivative? It is a product of the brain that somehow comes out, or is there something irreducible? Some would say that consciousness is a, an ultimate fact of the universe. We have to deal with it. And whatever the implications are, we have to deal with it in, in its own right. It's a, it's a minority position, but um, do, do you see any validity to that? I'm in a bit of a tight spot here because uh, I do believe in consciousness, experience consciousness, whatever you prefer to say. And as I've said many times, consciousness is the one thing that isn't reduced if it's an illusion. So saying it's an illusion reduces nothing for me. <laughs> At the same time, I am very clear that I know nothing beyond that. I really don't know what it is. And I think it would be overreaching to present these theories um, that one runs across that everything has a little bit of consciousness and it's something global that the, the toothbrush has a little bit of consciousness <laughs> or whatever. I really don't know. And so I think the art of this is to be a dualist because it's honest, but to be an honest dualist, which means saying almost nothing at all. And so it, the, 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 the discipline of talking about consciousness is to try to say something, but not even a smidgen more than you can really say. And so you really can't say very much. Well, but this is important because a lot of people would, would, would start out where you're starting, that we can't uh -huh. say very much, but they would then say, but of course, dualism is impossible because there can't be anything other than the physical world. Look, so we have to eliminate that. <laughs> and then we eliminate, and so it's a very different yeah, approach. Yeah. Okay, look, here, so everybody says they want to be simple and only say what we know, but then they, everybody, the, the you, next step is very different. You got two choices. Either you know everything or you organize your ignorance in some intelligent and honest manner. Dualism is the most honest manner of organizing your ignorance. Okay, and so... Well, I would ask you to defend that. <laughs> okay. Because I would say to, um, to start, that there might be three separate ways. One uh, is to say, I mean, you could always say we don't know and I'm not going to talk about it, but that, you know, that means nothing. Uh, I mean, if you're going to well, go forward, you've got to do one of three things. You've got to say, okay, uh, we, we don't know much, but it's all physical in one way or another. It's going to mm. be physical. You, you can say in some form or another, there's a dualism, we don't know. Or you can take the Mysterian approach, say we don't know, we can't know, or it's going to change. I'm not saying we our... can't know. Yeah, I'm, so you're not a Mysterian. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not a Mysterian at all. I'm not making any claims about what ultimately cannot be oh, known. Right, right. All right. I'm making a claim about is what I do not know. Okay. And I feel it's pr it's precious to hold on to an honest acknowledgement of one's own ignorance, or else you make yourself phony and you make the world more boring. I, I mean, it's I, it's just. I'm, it's I'm very comfortable with that, but I'm yeah. fascinated by. You, the perch that you sit on. Yes, it's a very fine, fine. While line. you wait for developments or while you appreciate your own ignorance, your perch, you use a, a, a kind of your own kind of dualism. Well, you know, I sometimes think of it as, as uh, being like a tightrope walker, uh, where if you fall to the left, you succumb to superstitions, and if you yes. fall to the right, you succumb to unjustified reductionism. Uh -huh. And there's this very, very fine line that you can walk to, to keep a balance, and I think it's, it's uh, very possible and worthwhile to do that. All right, so I want to explore a little bit about okay. this dualism. Okay, well... Um, That's a word that in, in intellectual circles, I think you know, uh, is oh, a little bit uh, disparaged. It's, oh, it's terribly unfashionable. <laughs> it's terribly unfashionable, but I'm in this for the long game. Good, good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, people who follow fashion are um, silly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, who has time for that? So um, I would say we can start from the, the most uh, basic questions of what, what we have to work with, and what we have to work with is the, this uh, persistence of the empirical world that we, we come to trust so we can yeah. do science. Okay. We have this mysterious thing, which is mathematical truth. Um, we have, some of us, maybe some of us don't have it, but some of us have this sense of consciousness and experience. Um, you know what? There's not a lot else. I mean, that's kind of what you got okay. to work with here. All right. All right. Um, a little bit more, perhaps. Um, but um, the... the, the uh, so how does that move you into your own kind of dualism? Well, you know, I find it more honest 
more efficient, more graceful to package my ignorance in such a way that I say um, there's some channel of experience that I have, which is where dualism comes in, because I, I don't pretend to be able to describe that in terms of this empirical world that I measure through it. Okay. You know, this is, I'm not the first person to say this, certainly. Right. This is a, um, and I think the only thing that might distinguish me from various other people who might unfashionably allow themselves to be called dualists is that I'm very, very insistent on not having anything else put in my mouth yeah, about, yeah. you know, whether consciousness, what happens when you die or whether dogs have it or any of the stuff. I truly don't want to go there. I just want to hang on to the data I have, which is the sense of experience. You know, this seems simple enough to me. And that to you, as, as much as you know about the physical mm -hmm. world, and you've certainly explored it with virtual reality, and mm -hmm. we're here in the mm -hmm. Exploratorium in San Francisco where we have all these marvelous mm -hmm. projects and, and things that the human consciousness has, has done, and so we see the product mm -hmm. of what we've done, and you, you see that without 100% without confidence that that ultimately can be reduced to 100% explanation in the physical world. You know, Is that fair? I think the stupidest project that scientists can undertake is to attack the sense of wonder. And the way to attack the sense of wonder is to pretend that genuine ignorances that we still have don't exist. Okay, okay. yeah. And yeah. So, um, so this notion that we're just a smidgen away from a complete description of reality, that all we have to do is get the the the, uh, the, the uh, relativity guys and the quantum field theory guys together, and then we fix up physics, then all we have to do is a little bit more computer modeling of the brain and some data yeah, gathering, yeah, right, and we right, have right. the brain, and then we're done. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, I mean, could happen, but um, I think that that loss of wonder kills science, and you know, it's a strange thing. I've, I've often wondered about writing a science fiction story about a civilization that decides it knows everything and stops discovering things that actually are out there waiting to be discovered. <laughs> and I sometimes wonder if we could talk ourselves into <laughs> that. And, and that's, um, I don't think we ever could quite do that, but sometimes it seems to me we're getting awfully close to it. I think some people are, and I mm -hmm. think there's a reaction against that, but I, I have an aversion to worry, to, to being concerned about what the results of what we say, if, if the results of the truth that we come up with are very unpleasant, that's okay. I, I mean, you know, so be it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an unpleasant world. I, I, I'm, I don't want to be uh, constrained by what feels good or what looks good for society. I really want to know what's true. Maybe, right. Maybe. Well, you know, I, thus far, what science has shown us is a mixture of pleasant, unpleasant things. I mean, for instance, uh, understanding evolution is largely unpleasant because evolution is such a nasty process. Yeah. All of these little <laughs> features of us are yeah. not the result of some creative deity designing us to be nice. Instead, it's what's left over after everybody else was killed. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's the leftovers of just <laughs> endless, endless <laughs> horrible violence and starvation and awful <laughs> stuff, um, or heartbreak if, if, <laughs> through sexual selection, <laughs> right? And so, so um, you know, th this vision of the world that we see through science is not all sweetness, and then one has to adjust to that. And I think it isn't easy.